so when you're in Photoshop and you want to make a border, this is what we're going to do. So there's something called a, there's, we've looked at image size, but there's also something called canvas size. So once you've sized your image to the size you want to print it out as, so let me do that quickly first because this is bigger than I need. So let me say I'm going to make this like kind of 10 by 6, 6, six and a half inch image. Um, resize it down so it's going to be smaller but if I want to put borders around this the simplest way to do this is to change the canvas size and canvas size is sort of imagine it's kind of like the imaginary boundary of your Photoshop document and it is expandable or, or can be cropped down at any given point so to change the size you would go to canvas image canvas size you'll get this little window here and it tells you what the current size of your image is or your file is and then it gives you an opportunity to change that so let's just say that I decide I want to put a two inch border around the entire thing just so I'm gonna need two on my left two on my right so that's actually four inches so you can do this two ways. You can say, you can do this, it shows you the size, and you can just change it based on what it was. It's, it was, it's currently a width of 10 inches. I want four more inches, that would be 14. So I put in 14. And likewise down here, I've got six and two thirds inches, so I need to add four more inches to that. It'll make 10 instead of six. So you can do that. Um, you can also click on this relative button. This is a different, and it removes the file size in inches for you, and instead it just says, it, it basically gives you a place how many inches do you want to expand it width and the height. So you can see it converted it for me, it's just four and four. So I click OK, which you can work either way, in other words, relative or absolute file dimensions. You click OK. And let me zoom back out here. So now you can see I've got, I now have this area around it, and it's a checkerboard. So um, there's a way to, so the easiest way to fill that is to create like a background layer. So if over in, down here in my layers panel, you have the image layer that I can turn on and off. And then there's this background that we expanded. So if you want to see this, I need a new image layer here that's blank. So I'm going to actually just come up here to this layer, new, layer. And it's going to ask me what I want to name it. And I'm just not even going to worry about that. I'm just click OK. And it actually, is, it's going to put it above. But I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it so it's below. Then I just need to fill that layer with the color. So I go to Edit, Fill, and it gives me some options. It says Contents, Foreground Color, Background Color, Color that I pick, uh, Black, 50% Gray, or White. I just want White because I just want it to show up as a white border. So I hit White, I click OK, and now the border is going to be there and it's going to look white, which looks normal to us. Before it showed us that checkerboard pattern, which basically indicates in Photoshop that it's transparent. There's nothing there. Now, we could just print out with that transparency, but I, don't, I just don't like the way that it looks. If it prints something prints out transparent, it just doesn't put any ink down on the page. So it would just stay like whatever color the print paper is, which is white. But I do this because it just helps me visualize what I'm doing now. There's one other important step with this that you want to change. What we want to do now is we want to put a little line around the edge of the border that we just made so that when we print out the photo on the printer, it's really easy to just cut down to those markings, the, that line, and we don't have to say, see, you know, did it leave a little extra paper because of the width of the roll? 
so on and so forth. So this just makes it, this is an important step. So it's real easy, but it's important. So under the layer we just made, we come down here and we, we hold, if you're on a Mac, you hold down the control key and you click on it. If you're on a PC, you just do the right mouse button. And you get the sub menu. You go to blending options. It comes up with this really complicated dialog box. But all we need to do is click on stroke. And when we click on something on the left, then the, rel the tools for it show up in the middle here. We just go, we can keep our size to one pixel. Make it a little bit bigger. Um, the position we would like to be, we would like it to be on the inside as opposed to the outside. So it's actually like that. And then you can choose the color. Black is perfect. We just want a little thin black line that we know is exactly two inches away from my print. So I click OK. And sorry, I'm just going to back out of here so we can see this. Now, one of the things, now it's done this, and you'll notice down here that we've got, we've got our layer, and then there's these little, two little things that says effects and stroke down here. The stroke is what we just added. Um, if you look really closely at the corner here, there's a little line right there, and it's going to be easy to see on your own computer better than on this projection screen. But I, if I turn that off, th this little bit of thing disappears along the edge of here, and that's just your line. Unfortunately, it's very hard to see, but we know we did it. So now when I print this out, sorry, now when I print this out, um, I will be able to see... I will be able to see a little line around the edge of my margin and then that's a nice little way to put on borders and boy it really helps as from a measurement standpoint if you want an exact one inch margin around your print and you want to not have to like sit there with a ruler and measure it to make sure because you've seen just from when you or you've seen from mine when you print these out you know you're this is longer and if, if you put a if you put a um, border around here, you have some of this in addition to whatever your border is, but you, you know, you can't tell immediately where the two inches is. So you'd end up having to measure again with a ruler and then cut to that. So if you're going to trim down, this, that's the way to do it. It's going to save you time. It's going to make you less stressed. Now, the last thing I would say about this is when you go to print, um, if you, we, we change the image size. So if we look at the image size again, now instead of being 10 inches wide by 6 and 2 thirds high, it's, we added 4 inches in both dimensions. So now it's 14 by 10 and 2 thirds inches. If you want it to fit back down into that same size that we were before, then you'll have to adjust it here. Um, your other option is is to adjust it in the print dialog box when you go to f file print and it shows you the preview here you can and if you have your page size already selected or laid out or once you do you can come down here to where it says um, scaled print media and you can click on this to scale it and now you can see that the image got smaller um, because it's because it's now it's showing you the two inch borders that we just added. So obviously now if we print this out, it'll print everything will print out in an eight by ten sized window. Your image is going to be a lot smaller now because we have two inch margin. So you just have to think about what you want. But the advantage of this at this point now, if we print this out. The, um, the gloss optimization printing, that's going to cover that entire area um, up to my black lines. So in other words, all of this margin will have a consistent um, gloss optimization laid down on it. So you won't have a concern like part of your margin has it printed and part of it doesn't.